it's really important to uh, to understand that we really developed into a family that I'm very grateful for. To this day, it's one of the strongest families I have, other than my own biological family. So, so day we all. Hello, hello, hello. So nice to see you. Hi. Hi, Miss Trisha. Hi, my friend. What was your personal favorite episode? I have a hard time with this question, so. I've just watched it the other day. It's an episode called The Captain's Hand, and it might be one of my favorite episodes because I become a commander. I'm of the Pegasus. Of the Pegasus, exactly. And he does this moment in his, in his um, rooms where he, it's just he and me, and he hands me this box and he shakes my hand. And it was extremely emotional. If my memory serves me correctly, and I have not seen this in so long, was the one called Taking a Break from All Your Worries. <laughs> the torture ideas that Eddie originally had were so terrible. And he was like, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I'm like, no, no, you're not. No, no, I don't think we're going to do that. It was the episode where we were on the Demetrius and there is a coup. Tom was there, Hilo was there. There was something about being on that set. They built this multi-level ship with the floor and the grates, and there was just this kind of dankness in the air. There was this rogue element to that episode, and it's one that really sticks out in my mind. Also, it was when I was starting to have some realization about how good this show was and, and how fortunate I was to get to be part of it. And the passage, oh man, that was just a heartbreaking a heartbreaking episode for me to shoot because it was my last episode and I just you know everybody became family and I loved everybody so much so it was very easy for me to uh, go there as an actor the finale of season three it was one of the most exciting days I've ever experienced on set and it was because of the shot actually they were in the middle shooting around and I was literally like jumping over cords while they were on other actors. And it was like, it felt like ballet. It was so exciting to, to the, <laughs> so much so that everybody clapped at the end of the shot. The first episode we saw Fat Lee. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, and we're this married couple and I'm just so annoyed with him. And he's eating all the snacks in the house and, just and making a mess. <laughs> I'm gonna work, I've got a glass of wine. It's like, come on, like, what is this? My favorite moment from the show? Well, there's favorite shooting moments. The end of Dirty Hands when it's just Mary and myself. There's moments visually watching it when the Galactica is plunging towards New Caprica and they jump at the last second before they plow into the ground. I just was jumped out of my chair. That was so bloody cool. Well, you, you came into the show in season two, right? Uh, yeah. What do you recall about your casting and, and what it was like joining the show um, in the second season? I remember being really struck with the intelligence and the depth and the like open-heartedness in the room. I was like, I like these people. And I think they're really smart because my initial thought about the show is that it was probably dumb. <laughs> I hadn't seen it. All I knew is there was some remake of something that was pretty cheesy back in the 70s. I didn't think much of it, but so then I was like, wow, like who are these people? And I really want to work with them. They're great. I'd been acting since I was 14. I, I you know, I'd never studied. And so I, I just sort of pretended. You know, I went to work and I pretended to be people and I took it seriously, but I never, I wasn't method, you know, like I wasn't one of those actors. And um, I was joking around on set one day and, and Eddie sort of pulled me aside and, and he said, why do you do that? And I was like, do what? And he was like, why are you always joking around? Why do you not take your job seriously? He said, you're very good at faking it. But I think if you'd actually try, you'd be really great. At first I was mortified that somebody had seen through my faking it. He said, on this next take, listen to what I'm saying to you. Listen to the words coming out of your mouth and then just be a participant in the moment. And I was so overcome with emotion at the end of that scene that when I turned around and I felt 
Starbucks shame and I felt her guilt and I felt her loss. And I realized for the first time in my career that I was finally acting. So I think that was probably one of those moments where I found who Starbuck was in her soul, but I also found what I was capable as an actor because of, of Eddie. Was Carl Agathon's close to your own personality or was it inspired by some, someone else? When I first read the sides for the audition, um, it was a scene with Hilo and uh, Boomer down on the planet and they're basically Hilo's been wounded and from the sides I could only ascertain that he, he might not make it or he, he might, he, he's wounded, but he, the man is so brave and so selfless that he's willing to give up a seat. This was one of the rare times in my young acting career where I read something and I was like, I understand this guy, 100%. I know what's happening, I know what he's fighting for, and I know what he's about. I had this, this spiritual, this mental, this, uh, this kinetic connection to Hilo. It's really hard to put into words. I just understood him. I got some Twitter questions for you. Okay. Given how tense Kat's relationship with Starbuck was, did that impact how you and Katie interacted off camera? I think so, yeah. I do, I think so. The competition between the two girls are both really hard-headed. They're both, you know, alphas. What exactly are you trying to say, Lieutenant? What I'm trying to say, Captain, is maybe if you weren't up all night drinking, Jojo would have still been here. You know, I think me and Katie are similar in that way in real life. From at Chuck VS 47. Okay. Hello, Six and Starbuck. Two of my favorite characters. Woo! Katie, you landed the role of Starbuck. Did you dig up the first series from the 70s and watch any, or just pull the hard-ass cigar-puffing fighter pilot out of thin air? I was telling my dad about the show, and he, and I, I, he said, really, that's amazing. They're bringing it back. What, what role? And, and I said, Starbuck. And he went, I think you should watch it. So we, you know drove our way down to Blockbuster Video. We rented it and came back and opened a bottle of wine and sat down and, and started uh, watching the original series. And um, about five or 10 minutes into it, we were completely perplexed because they were talking about Starbuck. It was as if Starbuck had been in the room, yet we'd completely missed her. So we rewound it, the tape. <laughs> I started it again and went, oh. Oh no. <laughs> and as soon as I realized that Starbuck was at one point played by a man, I turned it off and I never watched it again. Working with Mary yeah. um, so closely, you had so much stuff with her. Is there anything that's, that stood out? But really the first day was, I will always hold dear in my heart. It was a life changing moment for me, honestly. She just, when we were done, she was like, oh my God, you're so good. And I was like, what? what, you talking to me? And at the end of that day, I went back to my trailer and I honestly cried tears of joy because I didn't know that I could be so happy working in television. The most stunning scene I ever did with her, and there was a couple of them, but the most stunning scene was in her passing. Oh. Uh, that was the hardest. That was, uh, to this day, when I talk about it, I tear up. To this moment, bing, immediately I go to, to uh, an emotional feeling of, disaster. I mean, it was the love of my life. When we finally flying over Earth, you know, <laughs> looking at all the animals and I'm talking to her and I look over and she's dead. Just looking for a quiet little place for that cabin. Maybe a garden. I don't have much of a green thumb, so I hope that you do. I just got goosebumps. It's like... We shot it three times and the reason we had to shoot it three times was because every time that I went and I did the scene with her, when I started crying, she wept. And she was dead, but then she started crying. And she, we couldn't have that on screen because, you know, she's dead. And then finally, we got the take, and uh, it was 3 o'clock in the morning was the last shot we did together in the whole series. That was it. For me, working with Mary McDonald was a total blessing. She took us to a very intense moment there. She was amazing. Battlestar was ahead of its time. Why do you think it has held up so well? Because the themes are timeless. The industry's taken off and there's so much to choose from now. And if anything, we're inundated with too much content. But our show was so well written at the time. The characters were so well developed. 
and how beautiful and uh, poignant the material was, that it was one of the first of its kind. I wouldn't have worked on network television at the time. It was too much. It was too adult. Now, again, because of streaming, it's the norm. And I'd like to think that we set that precedent. It's timeless. It has uh, lasting things that people connect to. I think that's part of what's so great about what we do, whether it spans, you know, that depth of psychology or it's entertainment and gives people a break. We're able to move people inside themselves, alone in their homes, alone in a theater. You're going to find your emotional life somewhere in one of these characters in one of these storylines, particularly now. And that to me is an amazing part of our job. We were one of the first shows that had women in the stereotypical male roles where we never talked about them being women. We never justified it. We never felt like we had to explain it. They just were. And I think that that's why so many people loved the show so much and they were allowed to identify with any character they, they felt drawn to because we never fit into those gender norms. It's a story where you know, humanity had to come together to, 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 to save itself as a species. It wasn't just any story. We, we had special people in special positions teaching us what the potential of this thing is, but we were also telling a story, a Noah's Ark story, a story about saving ourselves through gradually understanding what binds us together and not what separates us. I was like, man, this is really something special, and I'm so lucky to get to be a part of it. It didn't seem like a big, beautiful family. It, we were a big, beautiful family. I think that's what um, people really loved about the show. If you watched this program from beginning to end, if there was a nuclear holocaust of some kind that just wiped out civilization, because you watched this story, because you took this journey, because you understood it from the beginning to the end, you would have a desire to go on living. You'd have the hope and the understanding of life must continue onward no matter what. That's the everlasting story of, the, of what this program did. It created hope.